Hello, everybody. Luke Schulte. The other guy back cyber. You know, now that we've been utilizing herbicide tolerant crops for going on nearly 30 years, it's, it's easy to assume that as long as we're using herbicides, say like glyphosate or Enlist, over the top of Enlist soybeans, that we're not going to hurt the performance of the bean, or we're certainly not going to hurt yield. After all, that's pretty tough to disprove when we're applying those same herbicides across all the acres, broadcast across the entire field. And while Enlist soybeans are tolerant to glyphosate, Enlist, even Liberty, there's still an energy that's required in order for those soybeans to metabolize or detoxify that chemistry. And that's energy that can no longer be allocated or directed towards growth and development. But is it enough to hurt the performance of the bean or to hurt our yield? Well, in 2024, our PFR team in Atlanta chose to test one of these emerging sprayer technologies, John Deere's Sea and Spray. So on an 80 acre field, they tested this technology. Simplistically speaking, John Deere uses a series of cameras in order to detect weeds and control the nozzles. So they set it up for a soybean acre. Anytime those cameras see anything other than soybeans, it turns on the appropriate nozzle to control those weeds. That's a very simplistic view of it. And the way we constructed this 80 acre trial was we wanted to look at our standard treatment of a broadcast pre and post compared to a sea and spray pose. So every acre had, had a pre, a boundary, which is a premix of dual and metriusin. And then our control, or what we're comparing against, our broadcast post-treatment was an in-season residual of Anthemax, as well as contact herbicides of Roundup and List and Clethodim. That is what we're comparing against. Now, the next treatments are all sea and spray post-applications. They still had the boundary down, but they're sea and spray post-applications. The first treatment you can see in front of you was made at V4. Now, I know there was a lot of areas that were droughty. In this particular area, it wasn't droughty. In fact, they had adequate rain. The beans were not under duress or stress. So they made that first post application or only post application in this treatment at V4, dropped out the Anthemax because we didn't want to have the in-season residual in this case, just sprayed where it applied, Roundup, and List and Clethodem. Then the second treatment was looking at what happens if we have some escapes or we need to make a rescue treatment. So we still made that first seed spray pass earlier June around V4 with the Roundup and List and Clethodem. And then we went back out about 10 days later. We learned that 10 days was not a long enough gap because the weeds applied on the first seed spray pass really weren't fully desiccated. So still the sensor still saw those weeds as alive and they still sprayed them. However, this was to try to mimic what it looks like if we say have water hemp or giant rag escapes, or perhaps we had to spray our, our post-emerge pass too early because either the crop wasn't grown or the weeds were getting out of control. And then our last treatment was what I believe probably most closely resembles how we're doing things today. Because we have a premium machine, which you see behind me, only has one tank, we tried to replicate what it would look like for an ultimate machine, okay? So in the last treatment, we actually made two passes back to back to replicate having a dual tank machine. First pass had the Anthemax, uh, a broadcast, not weed specific, but a broadcast treatment of Anthemax on every acre. And then we turned right back around and utilized seed spray to apply the Roundup, the Enlist, and the Clethodem. A couple of things to learn by the multitude of, of scenarios that we presented. Number one, the technology works. For us on a, on a, on a field with moderate weed pressure on this 80 acres, we had good post-emergence weed control. Secondly, you'll notice the seed and spray savings. And the way that calculation is configured is it's not only what we saved in overall herbicide costs, but it's also assessing we pay $5 an acre on every acre that we don't apply. That's how John Deere charges for this. So in theory, as long as the technology works for weed control, and it did for us, and your post-emergence pass is costing you $5 an acre or more, the technology will pay for itself. And then lastly, and this is not within the sea and spray savings column is, you'll see, we saw a three to four bushel yield gain every time we utilized that sea and spray application as opposed to a broadcast treatment. And that's where I wanna challenge our conventional way of thinking. I'd imagine as most of you are watching this video, you're probably saying, well, I'm not gonna, I don't have sea and spray and I don't intend to upgrade to sea and spray. And that's where I think we can still learn from this data and that energy draw that's required that's pretty well been concealed up until now. These soybeans are under at least temporary stress even when we're applying herbicides that they're tolerant to. That's where I think the stress mitigation study and that learning to can come into play. As you can see in front of you, 
Over the years, we've tested a number of different stress mitigation products applied with our post-emergence herbicide. Now we utilize Flexar, and Flexar is gonna cause more at least visual burn, but these other herbicides may be causing more yield loss then we understand it's just not as visual as either. So I challenge you, as you start to think about making your post-emergence pass, even though the soybeans are tolerant to it, we know there's an energy draw or an energy requirement to detoxify these chemistry, and that at minimum, at least is causing temporary stress. So we just wanted to leave you with some insights as to what we're seeing with these new technologies, and perhaps challenge you to think about, now that we better understand the energy draw, the energy requirement, even in herbicide tolerant crops, to potentially include one of these stress mitigation products. They're pretty minimal cost, and you see the ROI overall was fairly consistent. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. Thanks for tuning in.